Hey everyone and welcome back to The Shivering Mouse. I'm so excited to see you today and today we're going to do something a little different. I know normally I do either a Disney villain profile or a Disney movie review, a Disney top 10. Today we're going to talk about a different way to get ready for Disney and I know if you listen to my podcast, if you watch my other videos, getting ready for Disney is always kind of the main plan involved here. And so today's Get Ready for Disney plan involves getting Disney fit. I'm going to call this segment Pudge to Princess. Pudge is the cute little chubby fish that Lilo on Lilo and Stitch brings sandwiches to. And Princess, of course, needs no description. However, Princess also can refer to, in my case, I'm flexibly, tentatively putting it out there, the Disney Princess Half Marathon. Now, if you're looking at me and you're thinking I look a little more Disney dining than run Disney, you're absolutely right. And that's part of the point. Um, I kind of want to run a real run just to say that I have. And um, I think Disney would be the place that's inspirational enough to get me to do that. My problem with weight has very little to do with head knowledge. I have you know, gone to school for medical careers for health. I know what to do. I am an emotional eater. And so I need a stronger emotion to rule out the part of me that says, oh my gosh, that chocolate looks fantastic. So what I'm going to do is start this segment and every week to two weeks kind of update you guys on where I'm at in my training, what I'm doing to get healthy, and, uh, kind of where my BMI is at at the time. I decided not to go with pounds just because BMI, I think, um, kind of points me in a more general health word direction, whereas pounds can be really, really different from person to person. You know, for my husband who's six, three ish, uh, certain pound amount will be on the skinny side, whereas for me at five foot five, that same pound amount is really, really heavy. And so, you know, pounds I think are just not a very good indicator of your overall health because for a five foot person or a six foot person, there's a big difference in the amount of pounds that you're supposed to go towards. You can see people who are 150 pounds who look morbidly obese and people who are 150 pounds who probably could use a few more. And so... I just didn't think it was a very good, accurate indicator of where we're at in this journey. So I wanted to kind of stick to BMI because that's something a little more straightforward. For those of you who don't know, that is the amount of pounds you weigh compared to your height to determine what your body fat percentage is. It is not the most accurate way to tell because it doesn't take into account muscle mass and bone density. But without seeing an actual doctor every single week, which would be insanely expensive, this was the best overall way I could think of to do this. Now my current BMI is 41.1, so you heard me right. Almost half of my body is globular disgusting fat. And so to go ahead and work on that, I wanted to start with a running plan. Because like I said, the eventual goal for three to five years down the road is the Princess Half Marathon. Why am I making this goal so far away? Because right now I'm technically in the obese category. And if I were to go out and hit the road and just start running, running, running right now, the genetics of weak knees in my family would blow up on me pretty quick because my large body weight would be putting a lot of heavy pressure and damage to those joints. So basically I need to start with something gentle to increase my muscle strength, the strength of my tendons and ligaments, and drop some weight off because the more weight I have, the more it's going to put pressure on those joints, the more dangerous it is for my joints. I want this to be a process where I'm trying to get healthier and that's not going to happen if I damage my bones in the process. Also, I'm coming from somebody with a history of, you know, my my pulmonary embolism, my blood clot. And so my uh, cardiovascular and respiratory system probably need a little bit of TLC throughout this process as well. But since those are the systems that will probably benefit the most from this kind of exercise, that's another reason why I'm driven to try and do this. Even if I never get to my eventual princess half marathon goal, I'll have at least made those body systems stronger so they can better recover from the damage I've done. And so overall, I just thought this was a good goal to hang on to. And the first part of that is going to involve, you know, losing some weight so that I can exercise harder in a safer way. So having 
thought of that, I did a lot of research into running plans and of course did a lot of research into how to do a running plan when you are obese and that involved starting with like a pre-running running plan which was actually longer than the running plan training. That's why I have my, my eventual goal so far out for that three to five years because the first year at least probably will just be losing the actual weight so that I can move from walking to running. Um, right now I can run short distances. I'm halfway, halfway good sprinter really, but not for very far. I can go far enough to catch my puppies and that's about it. Um, I can walk pretty much indefinitely. I don't really have any trouble walking. I'm not short of breath or anything like that. I don't have diabetes. I don't have high blood pressure, no pre-existing conditions really to worry about. So it's safe for me to kind of start this journey. But again, because of you know, joints and my weight, I want to start a little more gentle. So this week's training program is pretty straightforward, just adding an extra half hour of walking to every single day. Now that's half an hour, and since it's at a walking pace, I'm probably going to say it's going to be between two, two and a half, maybe three miles as I speed up. So we're adding that half an hour every day for our training. Another point that I want to add for our training is Add more water to your diet. Most Americans don't get enough water. We like to drink pop. We like to drink coffee. I hate coffee, so that makes this a little easier for me. Um, but definitely you want to stick with a lot of water. A lot of people say the ultimate goal is, you know, one ounce for every two pounds you weigh. I think that's kind of ridiculous if you, you know, want to do something with your life So <laughs> besides drink water. But uh, try to get as much in there as you can. You want to be able to have your body function at the best kind of level that it can with your current health if you want to go ahead and improve your health. I'm so excited to see if any of you guys go ahead and do this training with me because that would be really fun. Um, you know, it's not just about losing weight. It's kind of about holding myself accountable and taking what for me is normally head knowledge. I've always known in my head how to lose the weight and putting it into practice and kind of making the emotional eating side of me shut up so that I can reach this eventual goal. And what is a better way to inspire you to do that than Disney? I mean, for me, that's, I mean, you know, I have a Disney podcast. I have other Disney YouTube videos. I'm very motivated by Disney and I don't want to be one of those people who has to ride their little scooter around Disney not because of a joint problem or they broke their leg but just because I'm too tired to walk that far. I'm too out of shape to walk that far. I don't want to be that person. I'm not that person. I've never been that person but I don't want to go there. I don't want to start now. I have a lot of other stuff to do. You know, I'm a busy girl. So, you know, this is kind of my proposal to you and I'm frankly going to do it whether you guys join me or not, but I just thought I'd kind of update you every week on where we're at, and hopefully you guys have some comparisons to bring to the table, some new ideas, and maybe you'll go ahead and train with me, because I think it'd be pretty cool if anybody else who is in kind of a less fit chapter of their life wanted to kind of recover from that with me, and it'd be really, really fun. I love the format of talking to you about once a week or, or once every two weeks about it, just because when you have an accountability partner who sees you every single day, they don't really catch that change because it's so gradual. So I thought this might be a more fun way to do it and I look forward to training together and seeing if we can go ahead and both get healthier throughout the process. I think it'll be a lot of fun now that I have somebody there with me and frankly again checking in every week tends to make me feel more responsible. I've done a weight loss program before where I lost quite a bit of weight and the reason why it worked is because I knew at the end of the week every week I had to check in with my nutritionist and so this is kind of my version of that but at the same time, I'm kind of hoping that you're adding that half hour of walk and some ounces of water to your week too. So we'll check in next week, see how you all did, and I'll let you know how I did. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you later this week for The Villain's Lair as we continue our Halloween series of Disney villains. I love Halloween, and I love fall, and I'm super excited about this. So I'll see you then. Have a good day.